Happy Resurrection Sunday Kingdom. This is Pastor Tanya here, and I just want to tell you that he is risen. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the faith that I now live, I live by the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm so excited that this Resurrection Sunday, I can claim that I live because of him. No coronavirus, nothing that comes our way will distract us even more than we have been distracted. But we will walk in our authority and we will proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray for you on this morning. I thank God for each and every one of you. Bishop and I love you. We so, so very much miss you. And we pray that you would just continue to connect, connect with one another, do whatever you have to do to stay connected, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I have something I wanna to read to you. If you don't have it, I'll send it to you, okay? The Daily Devotional. It says here, the importance of the cross. The cross must become a vital part of your everyday life. Why? Because you have three relentless enemies you must overcome each day. Sin, Satan, and self. How do you overcome them? by living the crucified life. And again, Paul writes, I've been crucified with Christ. I want you to remember that this day, Resurrection Sunday, that we've all been crucified with Christ and we live because he lives and our days are going to be better and brighter than they've ever been. God bless you, kingdom. I love you. Have a great day. Happy Easter, everybody. Our scripture for today is, The, the Lord, Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Psalms 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Happy Easter, everybody. Bye. Bye. Put your hands together. Get about your bed. Let's go. Hey. In the face of poverty, you reign. In the face of mockery, you reign. Yes, Jesus, you reign. Face of violence. In the face of violence, you reign. Yeah. When justice is silent, justice is silent, you reign. Oh, yes, Jesus, you reign. Yes, Jesus, you reign. Jesus, you reign. We stand before you now. Your selfless glory. Your selfless glory you, you don't leave us alone. We won't let what we see, what we see change what we believe. Yes, we, we, we believe. Yes, in the face of sickness. In the face of sickness, you reign. Yeah, for the suffering victim. For the suffering victim, you reign. Yes, Jesus, you reign. Yes, Jesus, you reign. Jesus, you reign. Yes, in the face of tragedy. In the face of tragedy, you reign. In the midst of brutality, you reign. In the midst of brutality, you reign. Yeah. Yes, Jesus, you reign. Jesus, he still rules. He still on the throne. Yes, Jesus, you reign. Jesus, Your selfless glory. Your selfless hey. glory, you indulge in our need. No, we won't let what we, won't we see, let what we won't let it change what we believe. What we believe. We believe. Yes, we believe. We believe. No fear. No fear. All faith. All faith. We'll trust in you. We'll trust in you. And in your
your name. Courage will be a song of praise. Your perfect love. They cast all fear away. Come on, take it with this. No fear. All faith. We'll trust in you. We'll trust in you. And in your name. Courage will be a song of praise. A song of praise. Your perfect love. Cast our fear away. Clap your hands. Come on. Come on. Pull the suffrage of this present time. Are not worthy to be compared to the glory that's coming. I'm not worthy to be compared to the glory, to the glory that's coming. Hey. To the glory that's coming. All the suffering, all the suffering of this present time. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be compared to, to the glory that's coming. To the glory, to the glory that's coming. All the suffering, all the suffering of this present time. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. To There's glory to coming after this. To the glory that's coming. To the glory that's coming. To the glory that's coming. To the glory that's I'm not worthy to be compared to the glory that's coming. Oh, the to the glory that's coming. All the sufferings, all the sufferings of the present time. I'm not worthy to be compared to the suffering, all the sufferings of the present time. I'm not worthy to be compared to the all the sufferings of the present time. I'm not worthy to be compared to the glory that's coming. No fear, all faith will trust in you and in your name. Courage will be a song of praise. Your perfect love, yes, it casts all fears away. Your perfect love. It casts all fears away. Your perfect love. It casts all fears away. Your perfect love. Yes, it casts all fears away. I have no fear. Cause you are with me. I have no fear. Cause you are with me. I have no fear. For you are with me. I have no fear. For you. I have no fear because you're always with me. I have no fear because you're always with me. You're always with me. You're always with me. You're always with me. Yes, you're always with me. You're always with me. Yes, you're always with me. Have no reason to fear. You're always with me. You're always with me. You're always with me. I am not afraid.
bless you, saints of God. It's so good to be with you on this Resurrection Sunday. I'm so glad that you are streaming with us this morning. We have, of course, embraced a new normality that's in this season. Um, but don't be dismayed. Seasons change. And we are so excited about what the Lord is up to. God is with us always, even until the end of the age. And I'm grateful for who the Lord is to us, but I'm also grateful for who the Lord is for us because God is on our side. He fights battles for us that are seen and unseen. And while most of us have been in this season talking about an unseen enemy, you need to know that you're going to have a very seen victory. I wish I had some help in Zion, that you're about to have some seen victory from an unseen enemy. And so I'm so glad about what the Lord is up to in this season. There is, I enjoyed our worship team this morning so much. And there's a song that was just on my heart and on my heart again and on my heart again. And uh, they're just going to help me real quick uh, just with this little piece of song. They're going to just help me real quick with this little piece of song. Uh, there's only three of them here. We, we trying to make sure we social distancing and stuff like that, but we're worshiping the Lord. Um, but the song, you know it already, is so simple. It says, I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my life. Won't you help me sing, please? Thank you. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. Oh, the Lord is. The Lord is my light. Yes, yes. Lord is my the Lord is my life. I have no reason. I have no reason to fear. to right now put your hands together give God a great praise right in your home right in your house wherever you are in your car streaming just come on and lift your voice like a trumpet in Zion oh magnify the Lord with me come on let us exalt his name together hallelujah for the Lord is great and he's greatly to be praised we honor God so much thank you again for joining us on this resurrection Sunday this year, you have saved money. You didn't have to buy Junior no new shoes and have to buy uh, the baby girl no new dress. All of that, you're sitting right at home watching them grow right out of the clothes they already had. Um, but we are so glad that you are streaming with us this morning. God is faithful to us. Uh, God is God is God is faithful to us, faithful to us. Morning by morning, morning by morning, brand new mercies, 
we've been able to see his compassions, they're unfailing. And we declare that the Lord is faithful. I, um, I'm so excited what the Lord is up to. Uh, we have been proclaiming for you over the last couple of weeks the truth of God's word and pray that you've been blessed by it. But I'm going to ask that if you would, while you are streaming with us this morning, that you would go ahead and chime in and let us see your amens and your signs of agreement. And also, if you have prayer requests, uh, please, there is at the bottom of your screen, if you are on KWC Online Church, there's a place for a live prayer request. You can uh, let us know how to pray for you so we can agree with you in prayer. I believe it is the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous that avail much. God, there is some great things that are in store for us as the believers. I want to call your attention this morning to uh, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. I know that we are in this resurrection season, and I need you to know that there are some things in your life before we get into this word that will be resurrected. Good God Almighty, I feel like having church already. I'm going to say it again. There are things in your life that will be resurrected. So don't look at everything that you see right now that has been still, that has been dormant, and think that it's over. There are a lot of things in your life that are not even close to being over yet. Hallelujah. But don't worry about it because the Bible says, and the Word, the word of God says it this way. It says, except a seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Here's the mystery in it is that that dying seed will once spring up to become a very strong, very fruitful uh, tree. And I declare the same to be true in the believer's life this morning, that there is a coming up out of dirty places, dark places, hard places, good God Almighty. Uh, and that is the promise for us who are believers. Hard things work for us. Hard things help us. Hard things that challenge us, they cause us. We are not in a place where we're ever defeated. You're never as a believer. Let me say this, make it very clear. As a believer, you are never defeated. You may feel overwhelmed. You may feel challenged, but you will never be defeated. Good God, I wish somebody would just come on, type it in the, whatever you got to do, say it in your house. Never defeated. Nobody. As for me in my house, we shall shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm so excited about it. Let me call your attention to the word of God um, so that I don't get caught off God and go down some uh, rabbit hole on this morning. Uh, but I want to call your attention actually to uh, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, if you would, the first chapter. We're going to start our recording and our rehearsing of scripture here, our scripture lesson here in Genesis chapter one. And we're going to read uh, verse 26 through 31. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 31. And it reads as such. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male, female created he them. And God blessed them and said uh, to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth, put God upon the earth. Oh God, and God said, behold, I have given to you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in which the fruit of every tree yielding seed uh, to you it shall be for meat and every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein is life I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I want to uh, cause your attention to please run with me, would now, if you would, to the book of Psalm. And this may not make a whole lot of sense now, but uh, we'll try to make sure we clarify all of this and through our subject and as well through the ministering of the, this gospel truth for us. 
so that we're all in the same vector of thought. Psalm 24 was one of my favorite psalms as a child growing up. Uh, shout out to uh, Steve Lawrence, uh, who, who, the musician who actually uh, had us rehearsing this back in the BW uh, Subdistrict Choir years ago. It's Psalm 24 reads as this, it says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he have founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend in the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart and not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. And here's where I want to take my thought. Verse six. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face. O Jacob, Selah, think on these things. I want to proclaim to us this morning, just for a moment, as we delve down these last couple of weeks where we dealt with uncertainty, from uncertainty to opportunity, I want to uh, speak for a moment, get you back, getting you back. So just look at somebody, your kids in the room, tell them be still for a second and tell them, say, get you back, get you back. We, we're working on getting you back. It's amazing what happens in life. Life has a way of causing us, if we're not careful, to be thrown out of alignment or maybe be derailed. And there's nothing quite like being out of alignment. There's nothing like being put in a position where uh, things just are not seemingly working out for you the way you anticipated or wanted. One of the things that happens in our lives is that uh, sometimes we find ourselves hitting speed bumps or having challenges in life, whether it be loss of loved ones, loss of job, loss of income, loss of home, um, anything that we actually lose becomes things for an opportunity for us to navigate life. And sometimes it presents us into a place of challenges. And those challenges then cause us to go into a place of misalignment. Misalignment is a tricky place because um, I've had friends and not just friends, but uh, I know you can't tell by looking at me on stream, and especially those who are visiting with us, uh, but I am uh, quite the athlete. Just ask Stan if you need to find out who he is. He'll tell you. Um, and as an athlete, uh, there comes a time where uh, you begin to get a little older and your bones don't quite agree with your mind. And uh, there are times in my life where it seemed like things were not aligning properly. I'll never forget the first time I got a massage. I'll never forget that. I was on a, on a cruise ship and the guy went up my back and he said, and my back just began to pop as he went right up the middle of my spine. And he said, congratulations for the alignment. You're welcome. No charge for that. And, and the thing is, is that what I did not realize is that I was not in my full operation of who I've been called to be or what was possible in my life because my body was actually out of a place of alignment. I thought that I was running as fast as I could. I thought I jumped as high as I could. I thought I was moving with swiftness as much as, I, as possible. But the truth of the matter is, is that sometimes you get used to living a life out of alignment. God, God Almighty. Sometimes we live a life that's out of alignment so long and so often that we're more conditioned to that place than any other place. But I hear the Lord saying to us, it's now in the time, we're now in a season where we've got to align again. Come on, just tell somebody, say align, 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 align. Align yourself again with the plan of God, the will of God, what God is declaring for our lives. We must align ourselves again because alignment causes us to operate in a measure and in a place where God can be glorified. 
This passage of scripture, Bishop G, what does this have to do with anything? Because when we go through the passage of scripture in Genesis, there is a clear intent and a clear plan for what God is expecting from his people. He is expecting us to be fruitful. He's expecting us to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to have dominion. It is the expectation of God that because of who I've called you to be, that you have the capacity to operate in this four, five-fold ministry, hallelujah, that we find in the book of Genesis where you are uh, multiplying, being fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and having dominion. This is something that ought to be coming out of your life. This is something that ought to be coming out of all of our lives that we ought to be glorifying God by who he's called us to be and the Bible says that he created man in his image and after his likeness and when he created us in his image and after his likeness but then gives us instructions on what to complete he's letting us know that he's already given us everything necessary to complete whatever assignment there is at hand Ah, uh, I want us to understand this morning that you have everything it takes to be everything God has called you to be. You have everything that's required to operate and to live out the assignment that God has for your life. And don't allow any virus, don't allow any people, don't allow any uh, uh, beggars, don't allow any, whatever it is. I don't know what it could be, but whatever it is, don't allow anything to deter you from being who God has called you to be. Don't allow anything to deter that. Uh, this passage of scripture. In Psalm, I'm going to take you to Psalm, the earth is the Lord, is the fullness of the earth, the world that they, they dwell in. This, this verse 6 is one that gets me. Verse 6 is one that gets me because in verse 6, this is the generation of them that seek him. That not just seek God, but seek his face. Let me be very clear here, as I believe the Lord has us in a season where we are now seeking God's face like we've never seen, been able to seek his face before. Away with the distractions. Your boss told you to take your computer home <laughs> and to work from home. Yeah, I know you got a Zoom meeting and I got a Zoom meeting too. And I know that you've got all these things that's going on. I know all, all of these other things are happening in your life. But, but here we are in a place where now it's time to raise up your children in a way that they don't get scripture from, y'all couldn't call it money, from just your Sunday school teacher, if we still do Sunday school. But now they got to get their scripture from their mom and their dad that's in their house. Good God. Now I'm putting some things back in order. So tell your neighbor, say, God is putting some things back in order. He's using an unfamiliar place and unusual things to get things back in order in our lives. And it doesn't feel comfortable, y'all. Can we just be honest? Can we just be true? God, this does not feel comfortable. It is not easy for me. I have been used to the routine of my life and what's happening in my life now. But God is saying, no, I'm going to restore some things. Can we just tell the truth about where we really are? Is we are really in a place of restoration where things are coming back into alignment, hallelujah, like we've never seen before. The Bible says in Psalm 24, it says in the 24th Psalm, it says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Why do you bring that point up? I bring that up because we need to understand that what God is doing is not just restoration for humanity, but the whole earth is in a place of restoration. The whole earth is in a place where though it's been uh, uh, groaning and moaning, uh, for looking for the sons of God, but now God is situating everything in this world to be reset. Good God Almighty. To go back to a place where now we are back in alignment with the will of God. Okay, uh, I'm kind of a, I'm a undercover nerd. And so I, um, yes, I said undercover. I'm an undercover nerd. You would never guess it by looking at me, right? I hope not. And Part of my undercover nerd is, 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 is this, is Deacon Todd, is this, is, is that as I um, was looking at the world, I began to say, I said, said to Pastor Tanya, I said, I said, I said, there's something else that's going on other than God causing us to be restored. 
And I, I said to her, and, and she sent me a, an article the, the next morning, and I, but I said to her, I said, I said, if we take a look, I said, it appears that the whole earth is being cleaned up. I said, because there's no planes in the sky, uh, the carbon footprint of everybody's being changed. Uh, y'all, I hope y'all are listening to me. It, it, it seems as if uh, in, in, in areas in the New York City where everything has been shut down and where scientists have said that if we don't do something in the next 10 years that is major, we'll never recover from the impact and the damage that we've done to the world. But the truth of the matter is, is that the whole world belongs to God. Could God, and God is intimately involved with the restoration of the whole world. Could God Almighty. And I need you to know that if God is concerned enough about the air we breathe, surely he's concerned about what's happening in your life. Could God Almighty. And that whatever you find yourself or whatever's going on with you, God is intimately concerned with how your life is prospering. Good God, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in hell, even as your soul does prosper. And prosper there really means, and it talks about, I'm going to make sure that you've got help in your journey. All right, let me keep moving. I can't, I can't even get an amen from the three singers. Four, my bad. That here. Oh, okay, amen. Okay, all right, got it. Hallelujah. So, so here it is as we go through this word. One of the things that I believe is critical for us to believe, you know, to understand and to operate in this season, as you get your life back, get your life. As the Bible says in Proverbs 18, it talks about death and life are in the power of the tongue. And I'm, I am not suggesting this is something that you may not like hearing from me. I am not suggesting that you begin to proclaim whatever it is that you dreamt about last week or last night while you were eating chili. I think we ought to start using our words very carefully because the Bible declares that death and life are in the power of the tongue. But it also, after that, declares that, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Which means if you declare it and if you see it, you will experience it. Okay, all right. Oh, God. Okay, let me, okay. Let, let me back it up to verse 20 for a second. Let me, let me back it up to verse 20. Verse 20 says, it says that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So God is moving you to a season in your life where your satisfaction will come from what you say. <laughs> ah, God, ah. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. The more you declare it, the more you proclaim it, the more you'll witness it. Good God Almighty. So if I were you, I would start declaring the healing in my body. I would start declaring the victory for my children. I would start declaring the wealth that God has laid up for me. I would start declaring that I'm above and not beneath, and that I'm a lender and not a borrower. I would start declaring what it is that God has said about me. And as I begin to declare these truths about my life, not because I just thought of it, but because if I go back to a time of creation, he made me to be fruitful. He made me to multiply. He made me to replenish, subdue, and to have dominion. And to have dominion is not a place of dominion domination, but it's a place of responsibility. It's a place of responsibility. And in order for me to be responsible, God, you got to give me something. Good God Almighty. If I'm going to handle where I am, if I'm going to handle what we've been going through, if I'm going to be responsible for these things, then God, hallelujah, let there be a release in my life that gives me the tools huh, and gives me the wisdom and gives me the knowledge and a place of understanding where I can walk in the fullness of who you've called me to be. Huh. We're in this, we're in this season where we're moving from this uncertainty 
into this opportunity, but allow the opportunity to ignite inside of you what happened at creation. Uh, I'm going to finish. But at creation, what happens is, is that God creates man in his image and after his likeness. And so one of the questions we have to ask is, what about me images God? What about me images God? Huh. And if I ask the question, what about me images God, it's also important for me then to understand what did God image for me before he created me? Am I making sense? Okay. So what did God image for me before he created me so when I looked at that, I could know who I am as the image of God? And what God images for me is the ability to create, good God Almighty, is the ability to create what is needed in the midst of that situation and circumstance. And so I believe for us this, in this season, God wants to know now that you've been shut in, Locked down, watching the number of deaths go up. Now that you've had all these other things going on, what God wants to know is, what are you going to create in all of this? What opportunity is going to come out of this? I've given you everything you need to come out of this looking just like me. Is that what you're going to do? Or will you look like those who are cynical? Those who are agnostic? Will you look any different from an atheist who comes out of this situation? Or will you look like a believer who declares that there's something that God's going to make happen out of this present situation? I believe that where we are, I believe that what God has called us to and I'm going to finish this and I'm going to wrap this up. As God has called us to a new measure of victory, a new place of victory, where we must get our lives back. Get your life, child. Get your life. <laughs> get your life. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm not going to. Okay. And as you get your life, don't allow anything to snatch what God has called a lie. Don't allow anything to snatch what God has already ordained to be living in this season. I speak to you that while others are in a place of expecting death, waiting for death, scared of death, that this Passover season for the believer is something different. We have the blood of God that's on our doorposts. We have the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that has been placed over our thresholds, which means that when this death passes by, there will be no death in your house. Bishop G, please don't make broad statements like that. Listen to me. You make this statement understanding that death and life are in the power of your tongue. Speak life over your own house. I said speak life over your own house. Don't call for the preacher. See, this season is one that's amazing because you can't call for your pastor to come to your house unless you're in Louisiana, of course. <laughs> you can't call for the preacher to come and see about you. This time, you've got to do it for yourself. You've got to get your life. And the scripture says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. If we are living li our lives like those who have no hope, we're living the wrong kind of life. You are a believer. You trust God. You believe in God. You depend on God. God won't leave you. 
he won't forsake you, then your outcome ought to be something amazing. Your outcome ought to be something amazing. Now, because I'm a very practical person, at least I think I am, there may be some death that we experience, and we have experienced deaths of loved ones and people of faith. But we as believers know that there is a new experience they have with Christ. They move from one dimension of glory to the next dimension of glory. That's their inheritance. That's their promise, is that they are able to see the rest of God, another part of God. No longer like Moses in the cleft of a rock, watching God from his hinder parts because they can't handle the rest. Now they can seek him face to face, see him for as he is. And just to find out that they are be, being changed into the same image that they are looking at. I want to, as we close out this time, I want to invite you, if you have not already, to give Jesus your heart. It's a very dangerous place to be. I saw something on social media, because all of us are on social media these days, and it said, it's not dangerous to die from COVID-19. It's dangerous to, to die without Jesus Christ. It's dangerous not to have him as Lord in your life. And so this morning, I invite you, my brother and my sister, to make Christ Lord of your life. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and let's say this. Let's make this very clear. You can't save you. You can't make you holy. You can't do right enough on your own to have the God type of life. And so, what I commission us all to is to live a life that we surrender our lives to Christ. And if we're going to change, and if we're going to grow into something else, it's going to be because the love of God has brought us to that point and that place. So please, give the Lord your heart. Make him your all. Crown him Lord of your life. If you don't know Jesus and have not made him Lord of your life. Just pray with me, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner, but I also confess that you are the son of the living God, and I make you Lord of my life, and I ask that you would take away from me my sins and restore me back to you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in my life crown you Lord and I confess that by the power of Jesus Christ I am saved from my sin in Jesus name and that easy you've had the greatest transaction possible listen don't leave our stream just yet there's some other things we have for you our host is coming back but we pray that you've been blessed by the word don't forget an opportunity to give to sow, and we've got some great things that's coming up that you've got to hear about from food trucks and all the other stuff that we're looking to help out our community, so please help us be a part. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm so glad that you're able to join us on this day, the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, on tonight, we have some very, very, very great people, some generals in the kingdom of God that are joining me as we look into this Passover season, but also take a look at what's happening in our world today. And um, I'm so excited about what's happening tonight. We have with us Archbishop, His Grace. Bless you. I call him Pop, Ralph L. Dennis uh, II. And then we also have with us tonight uh, Apostle David Hendricks, uh, so good to have you as well with you, us. 
Yes, sir, with tonight. Um, I wanted to, as we go forth into some things tonight, I wanted us to take a look at this pandemic that's happening in our life, but more, more, uh, more than the pandemic, uh, more explicitly about this time and this season that we're in. God is really up to some things during this time. And uh, I wanted to, for us to take a look at the, the Passover and its symbolism and how, no, well, not symbolism, or its meaning and what it means for us even in this time today. Uh, the Passover is unique because the Passover is commanded to be kept for all seasons. It's not something that we're looking just to keep uh, when it actually happened, but this season after season, you can go through all throughout the Bible and you find out that they always made sure that they kept the Passover. Uh, what is this? Uh, let's start off with, with you, Archbishop. Uh, you normally can get us at least trending in the right direction. Uh, so, so what is it about this Passover season uh, that we should make sure we are keeping in consideration as it relates to our lives today? Well, obviously, uh, one of the things that I want to make sure that the body of Christ does do is, uh, or does not do, and that's exclude God uh, and of course, his ultimate sacrifice that he gave for the world, Jesus, from all that's going on in the world. Yeah. Uh, this pandemic can very easily be a distraction, mm -hmm. even for believers, because it tests your faith. It raises questions that, for which there are no answers. Um, we don't seem to have any kind of solution or resolution to what's going on. But it, it should be reminding us also that we cannot forget Calvary. Yes, sir. Because the Passover is all about redemption. It's talking about uh, redemption out of Egypt mm -hmm. and from Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. That's out of the world and away from Satan. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this season, uh, Passover must remind us of uh, what Jesus himself, who represents the, the Passover from the, the book of Exodus, yes. um, which, by the way, when we see the Levitical writing says to us, that never again are we to keep the Passover as it was kept in the beginning, which means there were to be no more slaying of a lamb in a household. Yes, sir. The, the lamb from that point on was to be slayed in the temple. Mm -hmm. One lamb slain, mm -hmm. not uh, many, not many. Uh, <laughs> One lamb slain, yes, not, not many. Yes. And of course, uh, Calvary speaks of the one, one lamb, lamb, the one lamb slain. Uh, so that's, that's sort of, can get us turning our wheels here a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, I don't know where you want me to go from there. Yeah. Well, listen, you um, you always got somewhere good to go. <laughs> I, <laughs> do. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the the um, th that and and the the point that we cannot forget uh, Christ in all of this, even crises that we feel like that we're experiencing um, today. That there is uh, this redemptive and re. Uh, rest, this work of restoration that's even happening today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and as much as uh, we even look at today's society, we're finding out, Apostle Hendricks, that the world seems as if it's being rescued. Mm -hmm. And that the, um, if you would look at climate change, like we know that's been, been going on in the world today, that during this Passover season, as COVID-19 has now uh, demanded the ceasing of movement and busyness, that it seems as if even the world is being purified in some sense. Uh, that, that, that now the carbon footprint yeah. of many, um, someone showed a image of a, a satellite image of uh, Los Angeles and what was, is normally uh, thick and cloudy and foggy and muggy uh, is now clearing up. Is it possible, uh, Apostle, that God's hand is really in all of this? I think ultimately uh, we all believe in, in a theology and we are theists. Yes, sir. In that we understand that God is active in the world today. Yes. Uh, even in sometimes the most dire and difficult situations and circumstances. Uh, and I think our best posture to understand uh, what you've said is w when I go back to the Passover of, of the Lamb was uh, the requirements that each one had to have mm 
mm -hmm. in partaking of, fast, of, of Passover. And I noticed there were, there were several things. One of them was to tuck your garment, your cloak under your belt. Mm, okay. The second thing was to ensure that your sandals were on. Mm -hmm. And the third thing one was to eat with haste. Yes. And I think many times uh, our perspective at times can be clearly judged by how we position ourselves in the face of something. Mm -hmm. uh, because how you position yourself or posture yourself will determine as to whether you see the, see the, the, the present crisis as a judgment mm -hmm. or a refining. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's really and truly as to how we position mm -hmm. ourselves. That's good. So tucking our yeah. garment is sometimes if, if we've lived with things that have been floating or flapping, mm -hmm. things that need to be tightened. Yes. It's almost as if God is calling us to a leanness, not in a leanness sense of poverty, but leanness to a sense of chopping things down or breaking things down to where we have to look at our, our fresh state of priorities yes. or principles yes. and tucking our garments in, as it were, yes. having our sandals on. In other words, if there's thorns or, or sharp stones down the road, we will have the ability to progress very smoothly. Mm -hmm and to eat with haste mm -hmm. because there's a window within this Passover that had uh, to be observed by the participants. Yes, yes. And I think the window that we're in, we're seeing God's beautiful masterpiece take place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel beautiful, but because Certainly. God is at work, uh, all of the colors and all of the, the, the things that are being put together on this canvas, uh, I think in time will be eventually understood. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that's how we need to look at it. We need to position ourselves to see the opportunity that we have at this moment. That's you know, awesome. that, is, that is awesome. And I'm, I'm not sure that anyone, even if we would go back and, of course, who, who would know, would only could speculate, but I'm not sure that anyone who even lived during the time of Exodus uh, could say uh, that that was a time that they would enjoy um, going, going through. Uh, but I, I appreciate so much that leanness uh, that you describe and this readiness and preparedness uh, for whatever's happening, because I do believe that there is something tremendous that is happening after this point. Yeah. And it's a mystery. Um, if I can step back for a moment and, and walk through a couple of days of Passion Week, the Holy Week. Mm -hmm. Jesus goes into Bethany. On his way into Bethany, he sees a fig tree. Yes. He's hungry. Yes. Right. Fig tree is not bearing any figs. He curses it. Yes, right. Then he moves on into the temple, and you know how he cleanses the temple and have mm -hmm. you. Right. But the mystery of it is, is this. The fig tree is symbolic of Israel, mm -hmm. the elect of God, right. uh, of which we are now grafted into. Right. But when you're in the reference to that, it takes you back to Jeremiah 24. And Jeremiah 24 says, uh, the Lord shows Jeremiah a dream mm -hmm. of two baskets of figs. One basket, good figs. Mm -hmm. The other basket, bad figs. And it says it just like I'm saying it. Right. Good figs and bad right. figs in the two baskets. Mm -hmm. And yet it says that he allowed the good figs to be taken into the land of the Chaldeans, Babylon, mm -hmm. for the good of the figs. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. For the good of the figs. <laughs> and, and we don't normally see Babylon for the good of, of, of Israel. Israel. Yes, sir. Yeah. And yet, he says, I preserve them uh, in the land of the Chaldeans. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. so the mystery of how God works is, is sometimes amazing because you don't know what he's doing, right. but what he's doing is sovereign. Yeah. Yeah. What he's doing is, is producing the outcome that he desires. Right. That, that can blow your mind. Absolutely. Even think about the COVID-19. Yes. Think about the number of godly people oh. Oh. that wow. have come, have died, died. Yeah. Lost to COVID-19. Yeah. 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 Not exactly. just sinners dying. Yeah, yeah, these, exactly. these are godly people, people dying. Yeah. Could it be his salvation? Could it be his redemption? Mm. <laughs> He's saving the basket of the good figs. Wow. <laughs> Am I a good fig or am I a bad? 
<laughs> Which basket are what you in? What kind of basket are you in? Lord have mercy. I don't even know which one I want to be in right now. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, you want to uh, be in the, yeah, the good basket. You want to be in the good basket. Because the old basket, the bad basket, he, he discarded. Yes. yes. He discarded the yeah. old basket because they were full of worms. Wow. The figs were full of worms. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's That's... And, and the, the salvation of the Lord does not always just, and I guess just simply put, the salvation right. of the Lord does not always look like what we want it Absolutely to look like. So. Sure. Absolutely so. I mean, so. with the life of Jesus by itself, yes, right. just, just without even the discussion of how his life attaches to the Passover or the Passion season or anything of, the, of that nature. If you just know that Jesus died on a cross so that you could be saved, Absolutely. that alone is enough to say, ha, ah, yes, did you have to do things that way, oh, yeah. you yeah. know? Um, and, and so I, I guess that as we go through in, in uh, this, this particular time, what would you leave for us, uh, Apostle Hendricks, and, and I appreciate so much this leaning um, that, that you, this nugget and this, the sandals um, and uh, tightening our, our girdle and, and eating f swiftly uh, and not, and eating everything <laughs> and eating yeah. the whole thing. Let's all be consumed. <laughs> everything, all consume yeah. it all. Be all um, I appreciate that, that portion. Um, and what would you say to believers now who are um, in this season but believe God but they're leery, they're, right. you know, concerned. They, they trust God, but they need God to hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, would, what would you, what, what, what type of uh, consolation would you leave with, with us today? I was watching a program the other day and I was sharing this with Archbishop prior to our meeting. Um, and it's, it's a program that, uh, how it's made. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, yeah, I love that. Oh, <laughs> they were constructing a Rolls Royce. Yeah. And uh, I taped four or five of them, and I, I got the tail end of, I think it's the Rolls Royce Evolution. Okay. And I'm watching it because it's closing, and all of the writing's coming up on the screen, and the, or, but it's getting ready to close down. And then the male voiceover says these words. He says, the gearbox of the vehicle is going to be controlled by a satellite. Hmm. And then my ears, my ears perked up. <laughs> so I reached for the remote. My redemption draweth nigh real quick. <laughs> and I turned up the volume. And he said, the vehicle is going to go into different places. It's going to go into inclines and declines. Mm -hmm. The driver, and this was the part that really got to me, the driver doesn't control the speed of the engine because the microchip in the gearbox will receive a signal from a GPS technology that has mapped out the entire terrain that the car is in and that the car is going to. Wow. And wow. as the car changes its different <laughs> landscapes, the GPS technology from a higher place will control how the car reacts wow. to whatever piece of ground it's on. Wow. Now, the car cannot wow. see its direction, mm -hmm. but the car will be manipulated, as it were. Yeah, yeah. And I think God is doing some great divine, manipulative, chiropractic yeah. work to the earth realm right now. Mm -hmm. And we know the signal is there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We don't know exactly where we're going to. But the consolation is the microchip. I, don't want, I know people have been getting into the chip <laughs> in the finger and the hand. I'm not, sure, I'm not talking sure. about that. Sure. Right. I'm just talking about the signal that we can't see from an unseen place. Isn't that the, the Holy Spirit? Ah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the power sir. of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. The general, the, the yeah. general who's in charge at the moment, and he's leading yes. and guiding us. And it's just a sense of him that we have to develop absolutely. to a greater way. And the more lean we become in that God really reprioritizes, what are the things we really believe in? Yeah. How do we live our lives on a daily basis? What things are really essentially and vitally important? Absolutely. And yes, as sir. those things become clearer from God's perspective, our ability to navigate tricky, sometimes mm. difficult terrain becomes yeah. so much a lot easier because your hands are off the steel. Uh, yeah. And let oh, the Holy Spirit. That. Holy Spirit, yes, indeed, yeah. in control of our lives. Nice. Awesome. Ooh, 
that which which really says it's not new technology. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes, sir. If you want to understand spiritual things, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah get an yes, understanding sir. of natural yes, things first. Absolutely, yeah. yes, sir. Oh man, that is so powerful. I I, I appreciate the um, the the wisdom. Of, of that and understanding that the Holy Spirit must be our guide during Absolutely. these difficult yes, sir. times and seasons. Archbishop, why don't you close us out with, with some, of, some of your closing thoughts of, of what you believe is, is critical for us, vital maybe even for us. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity uh, and, and thank you for inviting us today. Um, there, there's so much, it's hard to sometimes to know where, where do I start, where do I end. This, this season is quite complex. Uh, the complexity of this season is just not what we're experiencing in the natural. Mm -hmm. But as you were alluding to earlier, what are those indications in the spirit realm? Uh, one of the things I believe with all of my heart, it has to speak to the redemption of all mankind. Mm -hmm. And with coming with the redemption of mankind is the redemption of all creation. Mm. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. So yes. creation is waiting yes. for yes. mankind. Yes, yes. The Christian faith has been a bit of a hindrance to God's ultimate plan, in as much as we have become sort of sectarians in believing that we're the only right ones. And yet, God gave Jesus for the sin of the whole world. Mm -hmm because the whole world or the whole earth is the Lord's. Absolutely. So Christ dies for the redemption of the whole world. But the Christian faith has become very uh, exclusive of other faiths. Mm -hmm. And we understand totally why, because we believe the only way to God That's be true. the creator, mm -hmm. the source, mm -hmm. uh, whatever others want to call him, mm -hmm. is through Jesus Christ. Right. I still believe that. Right. But our uh, segregation has allowed us many times to uh, keep others away. But I think this Passover season during this COVID-19 mm. sort of brings things in a galvanized way together where we've got to look at redemption as a part of what's going on in the world. We got we to include the natural and the spiritual concurrently. Yeah. And when we do, we, we can only conclude that this has to be about the salvation of the oh, world. The world. Yeah. Wow. Not just one segment of people, right. the world, the world. Wow. all mankind. Yes. So there's a message of love there, there's a message of union, there's a message of oneness there, yes. Yes. Uh, which we cannot escape. Yeah. Uh, and that's partly why we're, we're doing this call this global call for prayer and fasting yes. uh, from the 8th to the 16th this week uh, so that universally we can seek the face of God yes. at this time of looking back at redemption because that redemption was for Israel. It was for the Jews, but the redemption now is for the whole world. Absolutely. They were symbolic of what God was going to do. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, my thoughts are that we, we should be uh, observing this season. Uh, we don't have to practice necessarily the Seder meal and all that, but I think we should be sensitive to things that are leaven, because leaven represents sin. Mm -hmm. I think we should be talking about uh, observing the unleavened bread mm -hmm. during this time, mm -hmm. stay, uh, because uh, that, that, that feast that is a subset of mm -hmm. this Passover season mm -hmm. talks about that after you have come into right relationship, now you have a right walk. You walk without leaven, which means we walk in the righteousness of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to include that whole, that whole paradigm yeah. there into yeah. what we're doing uh, and be mindful that when the Lord does this, we have to ask for our own selves. We can't answer for somebody else. Right. Is this judgment or is this God fine tuning yeah. me? Yeah. Wow. Is he fine tuning you? It could be judgment for someone else. 
or make, let's, let's reverse that. It could be judgment for me, I put it on me. Sure. <laughs> sure. And, and, and but a fine tuning for another, right. which by the way is still judgment. Sure. It's still a type of sure. judgment exactly. when God fine tunes us. Or it could be yeah. a judgment for the household of faith. Absolutely, wow. without a doubt. Yes, without judges, a doubt. It first comes to our house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm so glad that uh, we had the, I know, everybody's like, can we talk a little bit more, let me ask a couple more questions and let's dig a little deeper. Uh, but I'm so glad we had this opportunity to really share. Thank you so much uh, for your wisdom, for your insight, um, for your candor uh, in this critical time of this world that we have not seen before. That's right. We know That's that right. we, the world will never be the same again. And we have to judge now even uh, what will be different That's and right. what is so critical for us to make sure we don't let go. Amen. Because Amen. there's going to be some things that the world will tell you to let go of that will be uh, critical for us in the days going forth. We can't let it all go. Amen. Um, Amen. So, I'm, so I'm, yes. thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, don't forget, please, for those who are streaming with us, uh, please make sure you're joining us on Easter Sunday at 10 a.m. for our, at, on, at KWC Online Church, uh, kwc.online.church. Uh, join us there at 10 a.m. We'll stream or we'll also have it on the YouTube channel for you. Uh, we pray that you're being blessed in everything that is going on in your life. Uh, make sure you are uh, practicing wisdom Wisdom. Amen. Wisdom is the principal thing. Uh, operate in wisdom. We are six feet apart. Uh, I ain't hugged nobody when I came in the door. I just gave everybody that from a distance. God bless you. Even my father. Um, and so uh, make sure you're operating in some wisdom and uh, using that uh, so that you won't fall victim to something that you may not need to. Um, the enemy would love for you to fall victim to some things. Uh, but be triumphant. Walk in the victory of God. This is, this is the week of a triumphant procession. Uh, so make sure that you are walking into this Amen. week with Amen. some great victory. Uh, and tell somebody to go, never mind. I was going to tell them, untie that donkey for me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we love you so much. We pray that you're blessed. Uh, join us. And if you're visiting with us, please send us any type of comments or remarks that you may have. You can send those uh, comments, remarks, prayer requests even uh, to info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Have a good, good day. Hello, my name is Favia Boyd, and I just want to thank you for joining us today for our worship service. I'm going to ask that you listen to the following announcements of ways to give online. We have PayPal, which is through finance at kingdomworshipcenter.org. We have Cash App at KWC Giving or search using finance at kingdomworshipcenter.org. And we also have our Giveify app. Join us as we continue to provide services to our community for food giveaway, April 15th at 2 p.m. Volunteers should arrive at 12 p.m. Don't forget to maintain your social distance. Don't forget to join us and stay connected to your small groups. And once again, we thank you for joining us, and we ask that you come back next week. Have a blessed week.